Hello, my name is Thomas Josef Spiegel. I'm an assistant professor at the University of Potsdam. And this is the only time you will see my face because my setup is a bit weird. Um, you know, but that's the way it is right now. And I'm talking to you today about the individualist bias. So first I'm going to give you some background why I'm interested in this topic and then I'm going to give the three main points and then give a very short outlook. So first, my background is a bit different. I've been working on uh, philosophical nationalism in the last few years and this is sort of the angle from which I approach social ontology now. And this is where my interest in individualism comes from because I think that individualism in social ontology is an extension of um, the broader nationalist consensus, if you will, in metaphysics and metaphilosophy. And I think that individualism and um, Naturalism are linked in ways that will become more apparent during my talk. But this is not the main thing. The main thing I'm going to talk about today is a recurring standoff between individualism and holism and how that can maybe be overcome. And I think it can be overcome, or um, one reason for overcoming it is by considering certain problems uh, regarding individualism. So if we trust Hilikowski and Julie Zahle, then the standoff began in the 19th century between people like Weber and Wilhelm Antonius. Um, then the 20th century, uh, in the second phase, between economists like Hayek or Schumpeter on the one hand and um, phenomenological, phenomen uh, phenomenologically inspired uh, sociologists like Alfred Schütz and Thomas Luckmann and then we've been in, this, in the third iteration ever since Sir more or less and within the stand up there's a predominance between individualism and individualism is just considered to be uh, almost a truism by many at least this is the situation as these authors here describe it. What are these notions anyway? Well, individualism claims that social entities like groups and institutions are essentially nothing but suitably arranged aggregates of individuals. Usually there's then supposed to be a convenience or reduction relation and holism means that social entities are too generous as something open about individuals. And I think there's usually an unarticulated prejudice here, namely um, that the single units of which social entities are considered to consist of are individuals. And I think there's many social ontologists believe something like that as truly innocuous. It's only uncontroversial that social relations and collectives are determined by individuals and their non-social properties, is what Frederick Schmidt says, and Luke's already says in 68, let us begin with a set of truisms, society consists of people. At the risk of more positive, these truisms may be said to constitute a theory made of final propositions about a world that are analytically true. And this prejudice is sometimes accompanied by a tacit implication, considering the nature of individuals, meaning that individuals are entirely determined in virtue of the intrinsic properties. And what intrinsic properties are is a bit controversial, but they can, they're usually viewed as the material or natural properties that a thing has. Also, that not only that living things have, but that any spatial temporal object has. But those 
intrinsic properties then do not include social relations, obviously. And this is, in my view, a very strong metaphysical presupposition. Um, it's rarely articulated, but if it's just taken for granted, it's a very strong presupposition. And I think that this sort of has an implication that individuals are considered to be analogous to social atoms, right? Such that individuals, individuals supposedly are supposedly analogous to material atoms in the following sense, namely that individual humans are to social entities like what material, material atoms are to composite objects. And I'm not going to talk about this. And then why do people want to be individualistic in the first place? Well, because I think in the beginning that individualism is closely related to a very dominant nationalism in philosophy. Um, individualism is motivated by something similar. So nationalists are often very afraid of dualism and individualists are very afraid of the dualistic group mind. And this is already Feuerbach says in the 19th century that Hegel introduces ghosts or the Spencer when he talked about spirit. So something like a group mind. And Tart says that anything social beyond individuals is mere metaphysics and mysticism. And Eric Watkins claims that holism introduces superhuman agents and that non-individual social theories are theological. And Searle, as many know, says that the group mind is a perfectly dreadful metaphysical excrescence. Harold Pinkett says that anything over and above single individual individuals are ontological sins. Meaning the anti um, or, or Epstein, who's critical of individualism, says that he wants to avoid a threat of dualism and he wants to avoid a mystery behind shared intentions. And I mean, this is what I just said. Uh, naturalism is sort of the backdrop and orthodoxy as I argued elsewhere. And individualism seems to be implied by naturalism. And this also explains why some people really would like to give fully naturalized social ontology, whatever that means. So why is then any of this an issue? Why can't we just all be happy individualists? This is because I think that there's a bias that or that the bias for individualism comes from a pro problematic source. And that problematic source is the concept of the individual. And the concept of an individual is a kind of foundational concept for this whole debate. It is used both in individualism and in phrases of holism. So, but one problem is that such foundational concepts in philosophy need to be neutral and unbiased to a certain extent. Namely, they need to allow explicating different positions fairly in the debate. But I think that the concept of the individual predetermines the whole debate already on a logical, logical space. Um, it lends, this concept lends individualism already an unearned intuitive credi credibility. So if it's, because if it is determined that the metaphysical ground, so to speak, of the social world consists of individuals solely determined by intrinsic properties, then individualism automatically becomes a more plausible default position. And then any theory which wants to say that there's something over and above individuals has to explain itself. Because if we start with individuals and this austere concept, why do we need something else? So it means that, the, that in any debate regarding these matters, the scales, scales will already be tipped in favor of individuals even before we start measuring. And this is why I think that the, so the concept of the individual is um, detrimental uh, to the whole debate and unsuitable as a as as a concept with such an important job. What can we do now? Well, I think that we can have two things and both of these things is, are something that we want to 
do in my upcoming project. First, I think that persons rather than individuals or the concept of the person should replace the concept of individuals. And this is because we can draw certain lessons from debates in conceptual engineering or conceptual amelioration. That is, the concept of the person already has um, includes that there is something that is more than the uh, material or natural properties to um, a human which makes up the social world. So this means a different concept will not have no metaphysical implications, but it will potentially have better metaphysical implications. And the other way would the other way to avoid this whole standoff between individual and totalism is to change the whole approach. Um, metaphysics, especially regarding the social world, tends to um, engage in a sideway on views, a disengaged sideway on views. And phenomenologic the phenomenological tradition is opposed to that in that it asserts that it can't be such a disengaged sideways on position in the first place. And these are two approaches I wanna I'm going to explore more in my current and future research and I would like to hear from you about it. Thanks for listening to and watching my talk. Thank you.